Have you ever wondered how to make a toaster service in Angular? I saw many people using foreign packages just to get your toaster served in environments that use Stellwinds UI. But what if I tell you that you can achieve the same by using Daisy UI, Angular, and the next framework without practically not downloading any package? So let me show you how I do a toaster service that works in all sorts of positions and see how this works. So let's get started. Let's see what the project will look like when we finish it. So first I'm gonna switch this in and we have this Daisy UI initial component with a hamburger menu. And when we do, we do click in the hamburger menu, we have these positions and we have uh, three, six, nine positions, each one belonging to a different kind of toaster position. And uh, you can start to push as many toasts as you want, depending on, on the situation that you are, you can push as many toasters as you can. As, as you can see, uh, pretty much every time I do click, a toaster push ups. So how do I achieve this? Uh, let me show you how I did it. What I'm gonna do is to open Visual Studio Code and start to work in the project. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a NX workspace. I'm going to say here, npx create NX workspace at latest. And we're gonna create an Angular monorepo. I'm gonna say here, Angular toaster. Let's say here, this is gonna be an Angular project. That is gonna be an integrated monorepo. I'm gonna say here, the, the full application is gonna be the Angular application itself. So we're gonna call her frontend. We're gonna use, use ES build. I'm gonna use SCSS. We are not going to use server side rendering. We are not going to use end to end testing. And we're gonna keep NX Cloud for the moment. So well, would you like to remote cache in to make the video faster? No. And now we wait. Okay, now we are ready to go into our project. I'm gonna say here, CD Angular Toaster. I'm gonna say here, called here. And now we are ready to run our, our project. So the first thing that we need to do is to ensure that uh, our front-end project has first tailwinds. So the first thing we're gonna do here is in my NX console, I'm gonna say here, generate. And when you look into typing tailwinds, set up tailwind, and it's gonna tell me what is the project that I want to configure. If by default, I'm gonna pick up frontend because it's the only project that I have at the moment. I'm gonna say here, generate. Nice. So. As you may see here in apps, we have a tail with config and pretty much is the default one. What it's telling me here, for those who don't know, is the tail with is gonna look inside of the source folder, all the files, except any files that has um, stories or spec in, in the name, but take any other file that has extension TS and HTML. So pretty much we, what we're gonna do is just to ensure that we have tailwinds properly included into our project. And what I'm gonna do here is gonna kill these two terminals. I'm gonna say here npm, I oh know, I'm gonna say here nx self frontend. And now the project is being served. As we see here, it is running the lo port local host 4200. And there we go, we have the default page of NX. Now let's include the UI into this uh, sum of uh, dependencies that we have here. So first thing is gonna open a new terminal here and I'm gonna type npm i dash d daisy UI. And there you go. So we can verify that in our package.json and the ACUI should be in our list of development dependencies right here. So now we have to configure uh, Tailwinds to accept the ACUI. 
So first thing we're gonna do is go into Telwis config and we have to include the plugin. So I'm gonna say here is require the AC UI and we have to set up the configuration for the AC UI. Uh, instead of this configuration, we're gonna write themes and instead of these themes, we're gonna include a dark color. So let's see if it changed the appearance of our default page and effectively it changed to black. So if I wanted to use the light color, that is the one that show up in the example at the beginning of this video. So pretty much we are back to the light color. Perfect. In, in the app component, we are going to create two folders. So I'm going to say here the folder, we're going to call it component and another one that is going to be pages. Uh, the page is going to be wrapped by a component that is going to use the following. So First, let's understand what the page wrapper component should have. So I'm going to go into the easy UI and in the easy UI, I'm going to look for the drawer component. The objective of how the drawer component is when you click here, it's going to display a sidebar. You can close it as well. So I'm going to copy the HTML that I have here and let's start by creating our page wrapper component. So I'm going to say here, uh, NX generate. And I'm going to create an Angular component that I'm going to call page wrapper. That's going to stay inside of the page wrapper component. And let's say generate. And effectively, we have the page wrapper component right here. And the HTML that we just copied is going to be over here. Just paste it here. And right here, where it says draw content, we're going to place the page content here. So I'm going to put here an ng content. Pretty much, so far so good. So any page that is going to include this uh, page wrapper can have access to it. So the next part is to understand what happened with the app component. The app component by default is running the app NX welcome. That is the component that gives us the welcome to NX. If I delete this part, uh, our page is going to be blank. That is the intention. Totally okay with that, because now we have to add the respective page. I want to ensure that I'm clicking the right thing. Okay. Let's say here component. I'm gonna call the index page. Let's say here index page. Nice. Let's generate it. And uh, what I'm gonna do inside of the index page component, the HTML is oh before of that because we are using a standalone component. So how can we bring our page wrapper component into this one? We just import it. So I'm gonna say here, a page wrapper component. And just like that, I can be able to declare the required components. In this, in this case, I'm gonna say page at app page wrapper. Nice. Inside of this, we wrap the index page works, we save this. And now we're going to focus our attention in the router because the routes are empty. We don't have anything so far. So what I'm going to do is to do a lazy loading to the index page component by using a load component. So I'm going to say here, the default path is path. It's going to be like this. Oops. And I'm going to say here, load component. If everything works fine, now we have index page works and we have the open drawer. Nice. So pretty much we have everything that we need to start to work now in the positioning of the toasters. So if we go back to tailwinds and we go to toast, in toast, we have a different positions that we can use. We have nine positions for us to use. And the idea is that we are going to use these nine positions to generate posi uh, toasters in the desired area of the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to generate a library. Because why not? This can be shared across multiple applications that I have in the front end, not only the main one. So what I'm going to start to do is to create a library. 
to start, I'm going to create a new folder in, in the root of my workspace called lips. And I'm going to generate a new Angular library that I'm going to call toaster. And it's giving me all the necessary structure that I need for me to run this project. So I have this toaster, the name of the component, etc., and the default specification. So I'm going to say click here on generate. And we have our toaster library inside of lips. Nice. If we observe here in tsconfig, we already have angular toaster slash toaster, so we can include the dependency across multiple projects. We are going to create two things inside of our toaster library. The first one is the toast itself, and another is the container that is going to place all the positions. We're going to go into NX, and I'm going to say here toaster. I'm going to say here right click, NX generate. I'm going to say here component, and I'm going to first to create the toaster wrapper. And we have to fix the directory since it is putting in, in a place that we don't want. So we have to put that component inside of toaster src lib toaster. Lib toaster src lib toaster wrapper. Nice. So let's generate that one. We are going to create a toast. So far, so we have the toaster, the toast, the toaster wrapper, and we're going to be folder going to be the service. And we're going to say here, this is a new file. We're going to say here, toaster service.ts. Okay. So let's focus our attention in, in the toaster component. And I'm going to paste the components I have here. So from the COI, we have the alert uh, appearance, and we have different appearances here, but we didn't have types or messages. So let's generate those. And what I'm going to do is inside of these uh, toast components, I'm going to generate the logic for this component. And we're going to have two inputs. One is type, another is message. Let's say here, input uh, the message is a string by default is empty and i'm going to have an input input that is type but type could be many things for the moment info is going to be the default one but we have to export uh, the uh, the component in the way we need it so we're going to change the selector for something like a toast and we're going to export a type that is going to help me to uh, identify the right taste that it has. Let's start by having this as a export type toast type. I'm going to say here info success and error type should match toast type. So far so good. This should... Oh, and warning. I forgot warning. Nice. So now we have all the things that we needed to run a basic toast. The basic toast, where I'm just copying it exactly as this shows in, in the CUI. So you see, you're gonna say issues here and alert, alert success. We have now our alert class from the CUI along with all the required info warning errors and success. So very similar on what we see here. The only difference is gonna be depending on what we pass to the component, gonna display that required information. So this is part one. Part two is gonna be the toaster wrapper. So the toaster wrapper is an area that we're gonna put on the screen where toast is gonna show up. So for that purpose, we're gonna place this HTML that I have prepared and let's go over here and I'm gonna explain what is going up with this toaster wrapper. The toaster wrapper contains all the sections that we need to assign the positions and we have the required positions, toast one, toast two, toast three, toast four, up to nine and each one occupies a specified space as we push data through the service this component is gonna take the data and push the required toes to the respective container if i click in the top right side of the screen the bottom that triggers that action to the top right of the screen the toes should be showing over that place now it's time to check uh, the toaster wrapper component by itself. Now that we understand all of these nine positions that I had described previously is now we have to generate the respective nine reference to each position. So we say here, because 
is a reference to a container, this is a container. So I have to reference each container separately in order for us to work this properly. So I'm going to say here, view child post one, and we give properties to be a uh, read as a view container ref. So we're going to call it post one as a view container ref, and we are going to do so on. So I'm going to say this, this is, because we don't have a constructor, we have to use exclamation mark. Toast three, toast four, toast five, toast six, toast seven, toast eight, and toast nine. Nice. Now what we're gonna do is to ensure that we can be able to pass certain kind of information to the toast. Now that we define these containers, we have to define the service that is going to pass the information. So I'm gonna jump into the part to create the service. And I'm gonna to start to define a couple things here. Let's start to say a type that is the horizontal position. And this horizontal position is gonna be left, center, or right. And vertical position is gonna to be top, middle, bottom. Now we can expo uh, to have a sense of where we're gonna put our, our, our toes, we're gonna export a type that is going to be the combination of these two uh, i'm going to say here export type green a toast position that is going to be a template string for a type that is horizontal position and vertical position voila now let's suppose that we are sending to the toast what type it is and what is the position and what is the type so we have message type and position so let's create an interface that does precisely that. So I'm going to say here interface a toast message. So the type it should be something that we're going to import from toast type. And toast type is going to tell us what kind it is. It's info success error warning. Pretty much. So far, so good. Now that we have defined this, let's create our injectable. And this injectable is going to be provided in root because it's a service. And I'm going to say here export class toast service and inside of this toaster service we are going to export the needed data that i want to interact with so i have to create a behavior subject that is gonna connect with the required data that i need so first of all i'm gonna say here public a toast message message it equals to a new behavior subject i'm gonna say here the type that we are expecting is a toast message and we're gonna default it as empty as toast message. With that say, now we can start to generate a subscription. We're gonna, we're gonna say here public toast subscription, and this subscription is gonna be a this dot toast message dot as observable. In that way, you can hook up data to that one. Now, the most important part here is that we have to ensure that there is a method that help us to display the toast. So what I'm gonna do now is to generate such a method that I'm gonna say here, public display toast uh, with toast data having the shape of our toast message. In this case, we're gonna say here, const this as uh, toast data. And toast data, we know we have message type and position. That's it. Now we can say this dot uh, toast message dot next because now we have to pass this as a part of the state of such a toast. I'm gonna say here message. I'm gonna say here type and position. Nice. So now we have a service that can help us to push data depending on what I receive. Uh, through the subscription, I can be able to put the respective toast in their in the respective slot. Now that we have completed this, the next part is to ensure that the messages that the toaster uh, container uh, receives through the service places the respective toaster in the respective position. Let's start now to work in our toaster wrapper. The toaster wrapper is probably the most complex piece of this part of the application. Now that we have every single reference to every single slot, 
the next thing is to ensure that we first subscribe, uh, inject the service, listen to the messages, and place the component in the respective position. So let's start. This should happen on load. So because there is no constructor here, we have two options. So we run the constructor or when the component is mounted, we start to listen. So this is why that we use implement on init. And I'm gonna say here, uh, ng on init and the first thing i'm going to start to listen is to a service so i'm going to say here uh, private uh, toast service equals to inject toast service there you go so now we have access to the toast service and now i can say this dot to service and i say here toast subscription and i'm going to start to clean up information before ensuring that it doesn't push anything out of the normal i'm going to say here pipe and the first thing i'm going to do is to filter what I'm gonna do in this filter, pass any message that messages are not empty. So I'm gonna say here, the value that I'm gonna pass as a callback. callback. Uh, no, that's a callback. This is our function to filter. I'm gonna return if the message is empty or not. So I'm gonna say here, call value by itself is part of this shape that we declared before for toast subscription if we go to subscription we have an observable that is toast message so value is a toast message i'm going to say here return a object keys value length equals three because that's what you're expecting to receive and a value dot message is different than empty with that we're gonna pass a second a second thing that is uh, we want that to be destroyed this service can be destroyed in case we had to switch pages we don't want things blowing up so the first thing i'm gonna do is to declare a public that is gonna be a destroyed ref it's gonna say here inject inject destroyed ref nice and i'm going to say here uh, let's see if it takes uh, take until destroy. Okay, so if we, we cannot get that, so we're gonna ha have to get that over here. I'm uh, gonna import this uh, from Angular core error interrupt. I'm gonna say here import take until destroy. Nice. Now we have take until destroy. I'm gonna say here take until destroyed this uh, destroy ref, and now we subscribe next. I'm going to say here, data. We are going to take uh, the reference of the container ref as an empty one. So here, let container ref, depending on the context of, of what I'm receiving in the message, is going to tell me in which position I want to use. But because I'm using many of these, I can be able just to declare the one that I need. So what I'll say here is I'm going to switch toast message dot position. And let's say when I start to do all the nine cases. Oh, hold on. I think I messed up the type. Hold on, let's go to position. The position type is a screen toast position. Oh yeah. First is vertical. My bad. Vertical position or horizontal position. So that matches what we have in in our wrapper here, our wrapper should match the right position accordingly to whatever I set up here based on this. Okay, so each one has already set up the position. And what I do here is to start to work into setting up each single position. I'm gonna say here now top left container ref, it should be this uh, toss one. I'm gonna say here break for all the other positions that we have. So we're gonna say here one two three four five six seven eight nine so i'm gonna say here top center top right i'm gonna say here middle left middle center i'm gonna say here middle right i'm gonna say here for the remaining three is gonna be bottom center right nice right, so i'm gonna say here one two three there we go four five six seven eight and nine positions nine nice should i add the default one probably yeah the default one should be the bottom right okay so now let's give a, a purpose to this to this container ref so let me collapse this to make it easier to read for over here and uh, now that we define the container ref 
it's important to identify the toast itself. We're going to say here const toast is equals to a container ref uh, create component. I'm going to say here a toast component. The toast component has properties. I'm going to say here, we're going to set up every single instance here. I'm going to say here toast uh, instance. We have message and type. I'm going to say here toast message message nice toast instance type is equals to toast message type now that we resolve that we can give a timeout to this i'm gonna say here set timeout and i'm gonna say here there are many, many ways that you can decide what to do with this but for the sake of this exercise all well, the toast is gonna disappear after 3000 seconds and i'm gonna say here toast destroy and that pretty much uh, ends the toast wrapper component we're gonna change this to toaster wrapper if i were to in the future hypothetically speaking i like to make uh agnotic components that use the same name as you were using in react so probably this is my personal approach so take care much to the heart but this is how i will call this here okay so that's it now it's time to export each uh, each single thing here so in our index i'm going to say here export everything from a uh, lib service toaster service now export this from lib toast toast component and export everything from uh, leaf toaster wrapper toaster wrapper component now with this now we can be able to inject the the information inside of our page component again our page component is still working here the only thing is we're gonna add to this menu all the positions and as we do click we are gonna generate the respective a uh, toast let's go back inside of our page wrapper component and let's start to code here to include everything that we need i have to import the toaster service from our application so i'm going to say here import from from angular toaster i want to import private toaster service is equals to inject let's say here toaster toaster service nice so what i do here is just to run the toast and i need to know position message and type so let's let's start by defining in the toast what i need what i say here position is equals to screen toast position I need a message that is a string and I need a type and we're gonna default set the default one. Set a default type. Type that is a toast type and by default it's gonna be info. Now we're gonna say here this toaster service, we're gonna draw a display toast based on the information that we set up. We have position, we have message, and we have type. That's pretty much it doesn't require that that much information uh, however we need to import additional two components to this standalone component by itself it's not going to show us if, if even if we go here even if we declare it uh, the code that we need to import the required toaster is not going to work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import the toast component toast wrapper component now let's look how the front is going to look and what we need to do here is to add the respective uh, toaster wrapper and pretty much dynamically is going to inject the, res the required uh, toaster so pretty much we already have this here i don't expect to see errors on the front end if we inspect the source code or if we inspect the application itself we are going to see that there is a toaster wrapper right now here. The toaster wrapper contains every single part that we want to include toasters. And now our objective is just to fill that page with the required toasters. Okay, so let's start with that. And what I'm going to do is just to copy part of the code that I have working to save some time. So beforehand, I already prepared this piece of code that is going to 
give us all the positions that we are going to cover in this exercise. And if everything works fine, we should be able to see some toss happening here. So, oh, the class is not even set up. Alert, alert info. So, what it may happen is that I may have to include the source code of the library inside of my code. So, when I say here in the, the Telwis config, it is telling me join their name. I'm going to take here, I'm going to include the Epsilon. I'm going to say here toaster and from here you include everything that you need to bring this let's see if this makes the build hopefully uh what may happen is i may have to restart the project yep so what i'm gonna do is just to quit here and run the front end and hopefully this modifies the path let me see there you go so now i can push as many tools as i want but now I have to reset the time. Okay. Uh, for this, we have to go to the toast wrapper and return this to three seconds. There you go. Nice. Follow here, let's say bottom right position. And they go off. There you go. And that's how you can create a component with a service that can help you to create those. Probably you don't need to download your own one. Probably you may want later on to improve the appearance of toast to have many other things that you may want to have for the appearance of your component. You may want a progress bar or a close button or decide the, your own logic uh, regardless on how your component works. All, all of this can go on, on this part of the component. And that's pretty much what I did with this small project. Okay, if you like this video, please uh, hit a like. And if you like the content of this channel, please subscribe. Uh, that's pretty much for the day. And thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next time. Thank you.